Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money, hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. Thank you for coming back or joining in the first time. Whatever it is that brought you here, I appreciate it. You know, today I want to talk about where do we start for premium? How many policies can we have? And I know I've touched on this in other podcasts, but for some reason in the last week, I've just had a lot of people that want the perfect plan right away. And so I am here to tell you, it's not going to happen. We can get close. We can find a place to start. Keep in mind, Nelson had 49 life insurance policies. He didn't have those just for no reason right? He did that because he constantly had new wealth. He constantly had income above and beyond what he was making the last time he bought a policy. And he needed some place to put that money. And we need to remember that when we're starting this process. We're not going to just have one policy. We're not going to get it right. Income is going to change. Life is going to change. Inheritance may happen, opportunities may arise to where we're going to have to start another policy. And just in the last week, I've had so many people that want this outline of where everything is going to go. And I know that many people are far more detailed than me. I am truly big picture girl. And I don't necessarily see a point for having this big spreadsheet and everything all laid out in it because life happens. I've seen it. Hundreds of clients, I have seen you lay out a plan and guess what happens to the plan? It doesn't happen. And then the people that plan want everything to go as planned and that doesn't happen. So then they get mad well, your car broke down, so you needed a new car. You got in an accident, you needed a new car. There go your plans. Cattle didn't take. Something, whatever, we had a bunch of open cows. That wasn't in the plan. We had more calf losses. That wasn't in the plan. The weather was horrible, and we had too much rain. That wasn't in the plan. So as much as you want to plan it all out from the get-go, We need to know strategies of how to use it. We need to have something to start with. We need to start where it's comfortable and we're not putting so much premium in that we can't pay it going forward. We don't want to start so small that we're not creating any wealth. And that's all relative to where we're at. That's all relative to what you're doing. There are some people that want to hold back a little bit, and there are some people that want to jump in with two feet, and that's great. But we have to understand there's going to be more than one policy. In my early days, I really started with plans. I had spreadsheets. I showed you how fast all your debt would be paid off. And as much as those spreadsheets are helpful, it limits our thought process as well. We're better off to spend our time thinking about what can we do with this cash value? Do we use it for operating? Do we use it for equipment until we get enough cash value built up to use for operating? But let's say that it takes us five years to build cash value to where we have enough for operating. Well, in five years, we don't just let the money sit there. 
Why would we do that? Why not borrow against it for a piece of equipment? Why not borrow against it for cows? Why not borrow against it for a vehicle, vacation, whatever, and pay that back? And then in five years, we have our money that we can use for operating. Don't get stuck in the plan. Nelson said it's about imagination, reason, and logic and prophecy. Imagination. We can't put this in a box. It is infinite. The ways we can use it are infinite. If we lay out a plan, guess what we just did? Cut off our imagination. Why do we why are we so worried about starting another policy down the road? Why are we so worried about getting it so perfect the first time? It doesn't matter. If we are close, it's not going to matter what's going to happen down the road. If you're so worried about making a plan that you don't get started, there's more harm in the fact that you didn't get started. Because where are we not getting started? I've talked to people that said, oh man, I read your book three years ago. I read your book five years ago. I don't know why I didn't start then. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't think you had anything to start. We didn't know where to start, maybe. Had you met with me and we could have looked at what the numbers were, we could have maybe gotten started smaller. Yeah, we're going to start bigger now, but how much cash did you spend on something in the last two, three, four, five years since you've read the book and not gotten started? When you read the book, if you don't schedule the appointment, you might not know where to start. You might think it's impossible. You might be trying to figure it all out on your own, trying to create your plan, trying to come up with your strategies. How do you do that if you don't have somebody there helping you? I don't, I don't understand it. That would be like me trying to bake a cake just based off of how it tastes and what it looks like. I might get sort of close based on past knowledge If there's caramel on that cake, I might be able to go buy some caramel, right? But I might not know what the inside ingredients are. It's the exact same thing with this. If I go to the pastry chef, they're going to be able to tell me exactly what it is, what's in it, how to make it. They're going to have the recipe. They're going to know how to tweak it to make it a better cake, a different cake, a chocolate versus vanilla, right? That's pretty easy, but whatever. If you're guys listening, you might not know how to make chocolate versus vanilla. But if you don't sit down and visit with me, how do we know? As I'm recording this today, I had my last client of the day was a 26-year-old making $18,000 a year of income. And most people would say, I can't afford it. I'm only making $18,000 a year. This guy had more money in savings than most people I talk to that are making seventy, eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a year because he beat Parkinson's law. We had a place to begin. He could have started a little higher than what we, what we showed him because he had a lot of money in savings, but we're going to keep it comfortable He's got a lot of transition to start with. We're going to start small and go forward. We're going to start more than one policy. And I said to him, well, you're going to have more than one policy. He goes, oh yeah, yep, I will. Why? Because he's read multiple books. He's listened to podcasts. Don't get so hung up on perfection. And I understand that is super easy for me to say because I am not a perfectionist. I'm a jump in, let's do it, let's get started. How fast can we go kind of person? So I understand there are people that are 100% opposite than me because guess what? I'm married to one. Oh my goodness. He has to think about everything he does and the consequences of it. I don't even consider the consequences of most of most things. I learned about infinite banking and said, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to take the $10,000 that I have in my IRA. I'm going to put it into a life insurance policy, and I'm going to use a life insurance policy for living expenses. Everybody is going to love this. 
because this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, this is going to be so awesome. And if he would have opened his mouth with consequences, I would have maybe considered him. I would have probably not did anything. I would have probably been more cautious. But guess what? I jumped in with both feet. And my passion today around the infinite banking concept is just as high as it was then. Had I not done it, where would I be today? Because of all the what ifs, right? I love the fact that he's always looking out for me, but there are people that are, they consider and consider and consider and consider and consider and nothing ever gets done because it's too good to be true or we have to have it perfect right away or not enough people are doing it or how come I haven't heard about it, right? And this is just one of those pieces, having it perfect. Just stop and get started. What you're doing now isn't perfect. It is going to be a process the rest of your life to learn this from me. If you're working with me, this is a process. You call me, run strategies, tell me what you're doing. No, I don't charge my clients for that. If you're a client, I'm helping you. It's not often I do help some people, but it's not often I help people that have good policies with shitty agents. And then I'm having to help them because the shitty agent isn't teaching them anything. It's not often that I do that, but I do do it. The agent is super important. You're constantly learning. You are never going to know every strategy. You're never going to know every opportunity you have with that policy the first time we meet. The first time we meet, it's an hour and a half meeting. I need to know numbers. I need to know what's going on with the family. You need to know the flexibility of the policy. You need to know how loans work. We might get to an example of numbers. That is meeting number one. I might throw some minor strategies out there, but until I get to know the dynamics of what's going on, don't expect that you're going to get this whole spreadsheet of strategies. It's going to take us some time to get there. And it's about you becoming the banker, not me being the banker for you. It's about you learning the concept, you taking some control and continuing to educate yourself. If you want someone else to be the banker, keep doing what you're doing. My best clients continually educate themselves. They're continually listening to podcasts. Mine, James Netherly's, what whoever's podcasts out there. There's a lot of them in this industry. They're calling me with questions. They're listening to podcasts about agriculture and farming and working cows podcast, huge podcasts that a lot of people listen to. All of those things are super important because the second that you become stagnant, guess what happens? You stop learning, you become complacent, and you start going backwards. Things are always changing. We need to keep that in mind. Policies are always going to grow. Hopefully we all have 49, maybe 80 of them, whatever it takes. The day when we can say it's a full-time job to manage my policies, we know we're doing it right. Okay, people, thank you for listening and hanging in there as I kind of beat a dead horse yet again. But if you are in the areas of Brookings, South Dakota, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, March 23rd and 24th, please go to farmingwithoutthebank.com. There will be a link on there for you to register for a Farming Without the Bank seminar in those cities on those dates. It's going to be a two-hour seminar. I will be there in person to talk about the book, to talk about the infinite banking concept, to answer questions. If you have gotten the book and you're too scared to do business with me over the internet, you can meet me in person there. I'm not going to have time to do one-on-one meetings, but you can meet me in person. If you know somebody around that area, please send them. I would be happy to have them share the information. Go to farmingwithoutthebank.com. If you've not gotten my book, you've not gotten Nelson's book, same place, farmingwithoutthebank.com. Grab the book, grab the bundle, which is even better, mine and Nelson's. Grab the bundle at a discounted price and read up on the information. I think in Nelson's book, 
you're even going to get a better idea, I don't think, I know. In Nelson's book, if you really pay attention, you're going to understand that this is a process of building banks, building life insurance policies. It is not a one-stop shop if you do it correctly. Thank you very much for tuning in. I very much appreciate it. If you have comments, suggestions, concerns, want to leave a review, please do that. Otherwise, everything else, you can send to Mary Jo at withoutthebank.com. Thank you and have a fantastic day. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals. 